Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, hello. Um, today's video is going to be about how I film my videos, or actually make my videos. I'm not going to go into detail of how I edit my videos and, and all that post-production stuff, but if you do want to see a video about that, just please comment down below and I'll try my best. I did have it planned, but I'm not too sure how much interest there is and if everyone uses like the same program as me but if you're curious and you want to know just let me know but let's get started anyways with what i use i'm going to just split it into kind of two parts in this video i have gear and then edit um so um the edit portion is just the stuff that i use again not into detail of what i actually do um but yeah um i'm looking at my phone just to make sure i don't miss anything um so the first thing i want to touch upon is the camera obviously super super important um when you first make videos you don't actually need like a super super crazy expensive camera you can actually just use your smartphone um, i'm making some suggestions as well i'm just showing you what i use but also making some suggestions you can use your smartphone Smartphones nowadays, the quality is amazing, and especially if people have iPhones or Samsungs or whatever expensive piece of metal, um, you can use it. The current camera that I'm using is the Panasonic Lumix. Um, it is a mirrorless camera, and it's not full frame or anything. This camera is very, very lightweight, and it is a little bit bigger than, like, say, this camera here, which I will talk about in a second. But what's so good about it is that it has a flip-out camera, which a lot of cameras don't have nowadays. So I really wanted a camera that had a flip out screen just because I didn't want to attach my camera to a secondary monitor or like a live view. You can if you want to, but um, I'm not spending money on just a secondary monitor or like a screen just for my camera. Um, what I can do with this is I can actually hook this up um, with Bluetooth to my iPad or my phone and I can use that to monitor myself. Generally when I film the flip out lens is perfectly fine. It's this big. There's some clips of it, um, but it's generally very, very useful and I really like it. Um, what's so good about it as well is obviously you can change out the lenses. I personally always use the 14 to 42 millimeter um, lens, but there are other ones that come with it as well. So it, in the kit, it came with that one and it came with a telephoto one. Um, this camera I bought a while ago, so I'm not too sure how, what the pricing is now and if it still comes in a kit like that. They're both Panasonic um, lenses right here. You can use other brands as well, but you just have to make sure that they're made for, like, is it the three-quarter, like three-fourths? It's not a full frame, right? So you want to make sure it actually um, fits the camera but this one right here is the 25 millimeter camera as well so I like this but the problem is that it doesn't focus properly um, it has focusing issues or autofocus issues so I don't generally use this comfortable distance when I film but generally when I film I, I like to have this one that I'm using right now the 14 to 42 just because it's a little bit easier I can just adjust it as needed because sometimes the place of my camera is gonna be different every time with this one you have to just move the camera itself um, but this one is good if you have like a stable setup and you're always filming from the same kind of distance um, next moving on I really rarely use these so I don't really recommend getting into lenses unless if you're like super like camera enthusiastic or in like an enthusiast um and you really want to specialize and waste not waste money but like spend a lot of money on these equipments because generally if you just like use the one that comes with the camera kit it's good enough um but um i highly recommend if you are looking for a camera um, this one everyone has, especially if you've seen on YouTube, uh, people use this for vlogging, I do too. Um, generally, this one is the one that's recommended for a multitude of reasons. First of all, it's super light and a decent compact size, not too, 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 too big. Um, and what it has is it has a flip out flash right here. It has a mobile or... How do you say this again? Oh my god, I'm I'm brain farting. But it has a movable screen that um, 
it can be bent and put in an angle this way so you can adjust the viewing angle depending on the lighting situation um, and you can flip it all the way up so again this is perfect for filming by yourself or if you are vlogging or you are traveling um, I use this generally if I'm making a vlog or if I'm traveling or if I'm too lazy to bring out my camera setup um, because it's a little bit more clunky and big um, but I still really like the quality of the Lumix better. The Canon is also very good quality. The only difference is that this one right here um, films up to 1080p. My Panasonic Lumix um, films up to 4K. I don't usually film 4K because that's a lot of data and it's just too much. But I think it's nice to have just in case. I apologize for jumping back and forth between the two cameras, but um, with both cameras, again, you can connect it with Bluetooth connectivity. So this one, again, you can connect it to a cell phone or an iPad or whatever tablet if you need to do a, again, secondary screen or if you need to transfer videos and photos. Um, the Panasonic, the one that I'm filming on now, um, has a mic, external mic. Um, I believe this one does not. It has an HDMI port and all that on a USB port, but it does not have a external mic with that you can attach to it. So whatever mic that you have on this camera is the mic quality and audio quality that you're gonna get um, it's not terribly bad but it is quite bad when you are outside and it is windy that bothers you I wouldn't but again it is very decent quality for a decent price um, it I know when I bought it it was 700 or around 700 Canadian and my Panasonic one was about 800 Canadian when I bought it um, including like the kit lens and the telephoto lens so Honestly, it's such a great deal. Um, the next thing I do want to talk about is um, the memory cards that I do have with it. The memory card that I do use is the SanDisk one. So I either use the Extreme Pros like this one right here, or I use the Extreme. So the Extreme memory card is the gold one. Um, it's a little bit slower in the read and write speed, I believe. And the Extreme Pro, which is this one right here, that's the black one. Um, this one is a little bit faster. Um, so it really doesn't matter. I just like the SanDisk ones. Um, they have never really failed me. So moving on to mics and mics are definitely optional. So if you are filming on your phone, you can buy an external mic and just have it that way and just have a better audio quality or you can just use um, the mic that's obviously on your phone. Um, no problem there. Um, sometimes again the audio quality isn't as good so some people like to grab an external mic um, which I am using for my camera right now um, just because the audio quality on this camera is not the best so having a um, external mic is definitely 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 an upgrade and a luxury obviously the mic that I am using right now is the Rode video mic with the Rycote Lyre um, stabilizer. Um, basically just meaning that it has this like red part that stabilizes it so that it's um, not so shaky and everything. Um, how it works is there is a little audio jack port. You stick the audio jack in and then um, you just turn it on. It is powered by a big battery. Hold on, let me just grab it. It is powered by one of these like 9 volt batteries. Um, the battery life of these actually lasts really really long you do have to remember to turn it on because i have sometimes when i film i forget to turn it on and that is like one of the most sad things because like you you just have like poop quality or like it doesn't pick up anything and anyways um the only thing is if you don't want to grab the rode video mic because again the rode video mic is expensive and it mainly has like one use basically just to be mounted on top of your camera um, it, like there are other options so if you already have a mic that you use like such as like a blue snowball or like a um, Yeti or something like that or any kind of like a mic that you hook up to your computer um, for example right here I have a blue Yeti um, this one right here I use for my computer um, or my laptop sorry and this one right here um, I have a little um, what's we'll called a pop filter and this one right here is the mic obviously um, I've had this mic for quite a while now ever since I started my channel I think almost 
near the beginning but yeah i got it early on um it is a little bit expensive if you're looking at mics blue makes other mics that are affordable as well and really good quality so i mean i would check them out but again you can grab any mic um this one is great because you don't only have to use it for the camera um you can technically attach that a um, mic the road one to like a computer or something i think i'm not too sure um but it's such an awkward um size and positioning that i don't think it's very useful whereas this one right here um i would use this sometimes as my mic for my camera the camera that i used back then um was a canon and the autofocus on those lenses and the camera itself was awful because it was really loud so anyways i used this and the way you use it is you need to plug this in it has a usb right here um you plug that into your computer and then you can grab one of these like um audio cables like it's a male to male i believe that's what it's called anyways um and you just plug one end into the mic and then you plug the other end um into your camera and then it will pick up audio into your camera um, but it needs to be plugged in via USB to your computer because um, it uses it as a power source. The next thing is a tripod and I really do recommend this if you plan on making a lot of videos but again, not necessary. You can just prop your camera onto a stack of books or whatever. Um, honestly, you don't need a tripod um, especially if you plan on just being a vlogger or whatever you plan on vlogging and stuff like that um, you technically don't but it adds a little bit of stabilization um, the current tripod that I'm using is the Amazon one um, I can link it or something um, but it is a one where you have can like um, unscrew everything and um, it goes back really quickly and super super convenient it is a little heavy though but it's a really good quality in terms of like like the material it won't like fall down randomly and buckle um because some tripods you get are really flimsy and um they can be blown over by the wind but this one is super super heavy it's a good and a bad thing if you are planning to film with your phone or um a smaller camera you can grab something like this this is a joby um tripod um and it's also kind of like a stick as well you can kind of use it as like a stabilizer i guess almost like a stabilizer it's not really a true stabilizer um but this right here can be adjusted really easily right now i have the um mount right here for the cell phone um so you can use your cell phone um it can be rotated as well so hold up so it can be rotated this way or that way. So if you want your phone vertical, it can be this way. If you want your phone horizontal, it can be held this way. So it's very, very nice. It is a little bit pricey though. Um, but what's so good about this is that it has, sorry, let me readjust this. So this one right here, it has a Bluetooth little button, um, compatible button, and it's a shutter. So if you like taking pictures or something, not just for videos, but if you want to take pictures or something with it, it has a little shutter. Um, it, it's powered by a battery, so you do need to replace battery if you use it quite often, but I haven't been um, doing that because I don't really use this a lot. I brought this with me to travel when I was in Taiwan and Korea. Um, I like it. Especially if you're by yourself, it's nice to have this so you can just take pictures by yourself. Um, not necessary, but nice to have. So moving on to lighting, um, as you can tell, or maybe you can't tell, I like to use natural lighting and right now I'm using natural lighting and it helps that I have a white table which reflects all the light back onto my face. I don't even need a reflector or anything, um, but um, if there is no natural light, so the sun has set, um, it's late at night or it's winter time, or the lighting's just not doing it for me, I will use artificial lighting and um, the light of my choice is the GVM um, light. It's like this big panel. Um, obviously, I'll put some clips so you guys can see it. Um, this right here is a great light because it is adjustable. It has adjustable dials. On the back, you can change the color temperature, which I really love because sometimes you want a little bit more warm lighting, sometimes you want a little bit more cool lighting, and it can go from one extreme to the other. I'm not going to turn on the light um, on for you guys right here. It's going to blind you guys. I'm not going to show that to you guys, but trust me, it looks really, really good especially from further away if you put the light further away if you put it directly it's way too bright but it's good for selfies as well if you need um 
lighting for that, which is overkill. Um, I digress. Um, one other thing is you can adjust the intensity. So it's not, sometimes you have like a light source. Like, so a lot of people buy um, the umbrella lights or just like regular light bulbs and they just put it in lamps and stuff like that. The good thing about the GVM one is that you can adjust the intensity. So you might not need such a strong light. You just need a little bit of supplemental light or something. It is really, really good for that. Um, I can't recommend it enough. Um, obviously, if you want really, really good lighting, like studio lighting and stuff like that, I recommend getting two of those and then one little like um, small light bulb to put behind you to do three-point lighting. If you don't know about three-point lighting, I highly recommend you look it up. If you plan on doing like very like professional looking stuff, obviously I'm not very professional, but um, I like to just have some lighting so you can see what my face and or whatever I'm talking about or like what object I'm holding and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's what I recommend. Um, another time I would have lighting then is like a lamp. Um, sometimes I really don't want to turn on like these fancy lights and I just want it to be like um, just chill and everything. I'll just literally turn on a lamp um, and that's totally fine if you're okay with that. Having a lamp, you don't need to buy these fancy light sources um, because for a long time I didn't have them. Um, I did buy some of these like cheaper umbrella ones and I really like them as well. Any lighting is better than no lighting, so just make sure um, if you if that's like the kind of video that you want to do, if it's like filmed indoors or like kind of like a talking video or whatever, or you're filming um, objects or a subject or something, um, highly recommend grabbing some lighting. So the last thing before I move on to the edit portion of like the software and like the hardware that I use for editing and stuff like that, um, I want to talk about the AC adapter that I use. Um, typically I film for quite a while. I don't just film for like 10, 15 minutes or 30 minutes. I like to film for longer a lot of times, especially the videos I've previously filmed before, um, which take up a lot of battery. So Either A, you can buy a lot of batteries, like just like separate batteries. Sorry, let me just grab one out here. When you have like a camera like this, obviously it comes with like one of these battery packs, which you do have to make sure you recharge. Um, it's good for like, this one's great. It lasts all day if you're vlogging or whatever, right? Um, but if you are planning to make a long video of you talking or you're planning on filming like something for a really long time, um, I highly recommend grabbing an AC adapter. I am not gonna unplug it right now, but um, this right here is an AC adapter. It's the HQRP AC adapter. Um, I bought it specifically just for this um, camera and the battery, so again, you can look it up for any camera that you get, um, but this is the one that I use. So the way that this works is that it comes with um, the plug, which you plug into the wall, obviously, and then you, the other portion is you put into the camera, which looks like a battery, and basically it supplies constant energy to your camera um, without um, having to keeping to like taking out your like camera battery and having to recharge because um, a lot of times i know back then i would have to buy extra batteries for my old camera just to film a longer video um so this way i don't have any worries or any stress of my battery dying because that happens a lot for a lot of people who make videos so yeah we are done with part one and now we're gonna move on to the edit portion i just say this with air quotes because I actually don't know what to name this section, but it's the edit section. So I'm going to first start off with what I use. So this is the laptop that I use. Um, it is my everything laptop. I am planning on making a PC, but um, this right here has been my workhorse for many years now. Um, when did I get this? I think I got this in 2017 or 2018. I don't really remember. Before then, I was using a Asus um it's called ultrabook not ultrabook what's it called oh, it, was, it was something like an ultrabook but i am now using this one right here and this is a dell xps 15. um it has a 4k screen and a touch screen um which honestly is overkill you do not need that i just really wanted some really clear crisp screen but that in itself is a double-edged sword because having such a clear powerful screen like 4k your um graphics card and everything is gonna be overkilled and overrun and your fans are gonna just keep going 
like mine does every time i do like important heavy tasks but anyways i digress it is a workhorse though it is great because i love the way that it's pretty color accurate and that it has a really bright panel um other than that um it is kind of dying now i kind of like um given it it's run for its money because i do use it so much and so what's so good about it it has an sd card reader um it has two um usb um three ports i believe yes and then it also has an hdmi it also has a lightning port and headphone jack honestly it's really really good it was pretty expensive when i did get it um laptops and computers and stuff are getting cheaper now it is really good for like just editing stuff like videos it's pretty good like i have no problems editing videos on it um but if you're planning on gaming on this i wouldn't really recommend it um it makes sense though because it's not meant to be a gaming computer or anything like that um this is what the keyboard looks like sorry my laptop is kind of dirty right now but this is what my keyboard looks like and everything the webcam on here is obviously not great but um you're not probably going to use this for the webcam i use a different webcam an external webcam just for this um it's the logitech c920 i believe it honestly doesn't matter um what laptop you use I keep like showing it but like my laptop keeps getting blown out because it's so bright um but yeah it honestly doesn't matter what laptop or computer you use um as long as it can run like a, a video editing software um or you don't even need to edit it there are other ways to go around it but um it honestly doesn't matter a lot of people edit on their macbooks um or their desktops that are older it really doesn't matter um but i'm gonna move on to the software that i use to edit so the software that i use to edit is adobe premiere pro and um i used to use sony vegas pro i believe and that one is also very good so there is a free editing software called davinci resolve and that one is kind of similar to adobe premiere pro but again there is a learning curve with every uh, software editing program because the names and the tools are slightly different um so whichever you choose honestly it doesn't really matter because unless if you're like focusing on like very heavy like graphics and everything or like animations and stuff um i feel like any editing software is pretty good you can even get by with the stock um, at video editing software that's on your computer um, unless if you really want like really fancy or like color correction and editing and stuff like that um, the editing software really is not too, 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 too big of a deal if you don't have like expensive one or whatever um, but yeah I use Adobe Premiere Pro because again I've gotten used to it um, obviously I was really used to the Sony Vegas Pro for a long time but then I taught myself how to use Adobe Premiere Pro if you don't know how to use anything I highly just recommend you looking up on YouTube on how to edit videos or even Google like I spent a lot of time on Google just looking up like what this tool does and how to do this specific thing obviously i don't know how to use adobe premiere pro like proficiently or like super super well but it i can get by and i have figured out a way that i like to edit my videos and color correct my videos because again that to me is important um another application that i do use is um photoshop and um I, it doesn't really matter what year photoshop or what edition or whatever photoshop you use um or even if you even use photoshop you can actually use um i'm trying to remember what's the free version if i can find a free photoshop um or a photo editing software i will link it down below um any photo editing software is good um just because um you will need to make thumbnails or you don't have to make thumbnails but yeah i recommend having one so you can add text on it because um text is a little bit more inviting in thumbnails but i like 50 percent of my videos don't have text on my thumbnail so who am i to say i don't know but um it's nice to have it um because a i make my ending card outro thing um with photoshop a lot of times if i need to edit like a photo just to like get a like the background out or something i'll use photoshop as well so it is a very helpful tool um especially if you want to just like elevate your videos or something like that again my videos are very simple but 
I like the simple minimal aesthetic so anyways the last um software in terms of like making videos is audacity um, if i could think of anything else i will like link it down below but audacity is a free application so um if you like doing voiceovers or want to do voiceovers for videos like sometimes i do um obviously i would use my mic the blue yeti and then i would um, open up audacity and start recording in there it's a great application it's free um very simple there's no fuss, no muss with this app. Um, it's super nice and I don't really recommend you paying for like expensive apps just for audio unless again your content is going to be about audio only or like mainly focus on audio. Um, but yeah, that's what I recommend. So this is going to be the end of the video. Thank you so much for sitting through that. I think it's going to be a long-ish kind of video anyway so i'll try my best to edit it down as per usual um but if you like this video then give it a thumbs up and if you aren't subscribed yet then please subscribe down below if you want to and um if you guys would like to see the video about how i edit or how i make my end card and stuff like that um just please let me know so i can see if you guys would be interested in that but anyways thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you guys have a good day bye